Hello and welcome to lesson 4.4, Applications of Sinusoidal Functions and Their Derivatives. So today we're going to look at using derivatives on sinusoidal functions and finding out what maximums and minimums are. We're going to be using simple derivatives or simple functions of that are sinusoidal in nature. So let's first start out with a power supply that delivers a voltage signal that consists of alternating current and direct current. Uh, given by this formula, V of t equals 4 sine t plus 9, where V of t is the voltage at t seconds. So we want to find the maximum and minimum voltages, and at which times these occur. So, to find where the maximum or minimum occurs, we need first the derivative. So, V prime of t is equal to 4 cosine t. We need to find out when this is equal to 0. Now, this requires you to actually know some stuff about this. So, we're going to first divide by 4. We get cosine t equals 0. That means t is equal to the cosine inverse of zero. So when does that occur? Well, if you want, you can draw a little function with cosine t off to the side. This is where two pi occurs. And this is our little function cosine. So you can see our two t values actually are at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So just knowing where the function is 0 is all you really need to know about these kinds of problems. You may have to do some other solving, but that's about it. Okay, so have we proven that these are maximums or minimums? No, actually we haven't. But we have found the times at which they occur. So we're going to need to prove that these are a maximum or minimum. So, most likely you probably won't want to use the first derivative test here. You'd probably actually want to use the second derivative test because the first derivative test requires various different uh, intervals and could cause a little bit of challenge. So, the second derivative here is negative 4 sine t. So what we do is we substitute the values of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 in. If you wish, you can grab your calculator to do so. Because all we are interested in is whether it's positive or negative. You don't actually need to know the exact value. But if you wish, you can, and put that into your calculator. Just have to switch my modes to radian so I can actually figure this out. This one equals negative 4. This one equals positive 4. So what we found this one is concave down. T equal to pi over 2 is a max. This one is concave up. And therefore, T equal to 3 pi over 2 is a minimum. Now, knowing the function as you do of 4 sine t plus 9, you can actually draw a sketch of what this looks like. You can definitely figure that out. So all we need to do now is we need to actually find the, find the maximum and minimum voltages. So that requires us to just substitute it in. So now we're substituting pi over 2 into the original function, and we're substituting 3 pi over 2 into our original function. 
Okay. So, now we're substituting into the residual function. Again, we could just use the calculator to work this out, which I'm going to do. Oops, I forgot what my entire function was. Oh, yes. Okay. Class actor, this turns out to be 13. And the minimum voltage turns out to be 5. So, therefore, Maximum voltage. Oops. Voltage is 13 volts. Now, it, although it occurs at pi over 2 seconds, when else does it occur? Since we know what uh, how a sine operates, we know that it occurs every 2 pi units after that. So you can actually say at pi over 2 seconds, and 2 pi seconds after that. If you want, you can give a function for it. So that t value is pi over 2 plus k times 2 pi. Oh, and k is an element of the natural. Sorry, integers. Okay, so, and also the minimum. Is 5 volts. At this one, I'll just write the expression for it. So t belongs to real numbers. K is a integer such that t is the value of 3 pi over 2 plus every multiple of 2 pi after that. There we go. Okay, so determine the period in seconds, frequency in hertz, and amplitude in volts. Well, this is just some information that I just wanted you guys to realize. So, period. Well, due to the fact that we know it repeats every uh, 2 pi units, this is 2 pi seconds. To figure out frequency, frequency is just turns out to be the reciprocal of the period. So 1 over 2 pi and as, you, as soon as you put it over, 1 over seconds is called a hertz. And amplitude, well, that one was easy too. The amplitude turns out to be 4 volts, due to the fact, fact of the value of 4 in front of the 4 sine 9t. Sorry, 4 sine t plus 9. Okay. Okay, now some of the problems that you're going to see today also deal with a model similar to this one. And it, I'd be a bad math teacher if I didn't show you this. So a simple pendulum can be modeled using this kind of function. This length, A, from the center point to the outside edge, is your maximum horizontal distance. It's going to be measured in meters. So if they give you the information in centimeters, you just have to change it into meters. Whatever this length is right here, for the pendulum, again, the length should also be in meters. If it's not in meters, change it into meters. And you put it under the square root right underneath this 9.8 units. You figure out those values, it'll give you this pendulum swing for this expression. Okay, and thus concludes our lesson for 4.4. .4.